In this movie, we'll take a look at basic motion in Anime Studio Pro. However, before we get into that, we're going to look at some other controls that we have ignored up to this point in time down in the timeline control areas, namely onion skins at this point. The graph mode we'll take a look at later as we get into some more sophisticated features, and you won't even have this option unless you have Anime Studio Pro itself. To begin with, we're going to do basic motion with a circle, and then we're going to bring a character in and do a simple walk cycle with it. But using a circle is the easiest way to see how onion skins work. I'll click and drag and hold the shift key to constrain this to a perfect circle. And there we go. Keyboard shortcut T takes me back to my translation tool, and now I'm free to move the object back and forth. Well, onion skins is a item right down here that has a disclosure triangle with several options, relative frames and selected layer only. Onion skins gets the name from dried onions. When you hold up a very thin layer of that, you can see through it. It's got a degree of transparency, just like tracing paper. So this is a digital replication of how the old world animators used to get smooth motion when they drew the animations by laying tracing paper over what they were working on, seeing what the frame before and behind them look like to draw the current frame accurately. Let's create some basic motion. As you've seen me do earlier in other movies, you really can't get around Anime Studio Pro without using the keyframes to invoke some of the features. I'll press the step ahead button in the timeline controls. We're now at frame one. I'll leave that right there. We can advance to frame 18 by clicking on the lavender bar right here. And at this point, I'm going to click, hold the shift key and drag this for perfect movement across to the left side of the screen. Let's turn on onion skins, and actually onion skins are always on, but let me invoke that right now so you can see what it is. There's a second line below the lavender line here, and this is your onion skin line where you click for relative information, like putting tracing paper over, of the frames preceding it or following after your current point in time. I'll click once and we'll see a very light faint circle occur right there. I want to move that instead so I'm going to click on it and make it go away. I'll come back down here to six frames and we'll see the circle now draw itself over here. When I drag the timeline control back we'll see that the circle matches up and at frame six it's perfectly aligned with that circle. But here's where we get a cool little feature. I'm going to hide that in in skin open the disclosure triangle for onion skins and choose relative frames. I'll just click off that to make the dialog box disappear. Now when I select the onion skin frames, and I'll go about right here on the left side of the time marker, they move over about equidistant on the right side, we're going to get something kind of cool happening. To get the full effects of it, I need to actually move the circle back in time. The relative option keeps the onion skin frames the same distance from your time marker as you move through the animation or scrub the timeline as it's called. If we happen to move further down the timeline and instead drag our circle up to here, then when I go back in time, I'm going to see those markers show me exactly where the circle's been and where it's going. A nice, nice way to keep track of motion. Well, that's interesting, but well, let's add it to a real character right now. I'm going to come back to time frame zero, and actually I'm going to add a new layer, a vector layer, and I'm going to delete our layer one here with the circle on it. Are you sure you want to delete it? You bet. Let's go ahead and import a pre-existing character that ships with Anime Studio Pro. We'll come down to import. I'll skip anime characters because those are usually rigged with motion already, and we want a full body here, in fact. We'll simply select characters. Anime's got several to work with, and we'll just open up Lenny, who's our first character there. I'll select OK, and he pops into our scene. Now we'll see Lenny is his own group. Down here in the layers palette on the lower right hand side, you'll see a folder with a disclosure triangle where we can open that up, see the skeleton structure that Lenny has, and then we can see his actual drawing surface area here. Earlier, when we were looking at how to draw characters, I've put down some of my personal preferences on ways that I have found to make life easier when you're working with Anime Studio Pro. However, it's good to know that there's other ways to do it. My way may not be the best way for you, and these imported characters, the ones that come stock with this program, show you some optional ways to work with your character development. 
We've created our characters historically on multiple layers. This gives us easy access to one leg over the next leg, one arm compared to the other, and we can move the layers around and easily change the stacking order. With Lenny here, that's not the case. He's all done in a single layer named Side View right here. You can do that by taking the shapes and shuffling them forward and backward, but it's a little harder to work with later on. Additionally, we see a large bone sticking out right here. The artist that put this together likes to work with the hip bones removed from the character. When I design these, I like to actually have the hip bone right in the center of gravity for the character. And here's why. If, with the bone layer selected, I go ahead and choose this bone, keyboard shortcut B to select that, and then Z to go ahead and manipulate that. When I want to move the hip bone, instead of rotating the character around the middle, it's rotating the character around the base of the bone. You can work with it this way. It's certainly easier to grab the bone when it's sticking out from the side. However, it creates some problems when you use some other options along with it. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and finish off how to animate and get basic motion with a character using onion skins.